Hello everyone, we are on chapter 8 and we are on paragraph 5. There is yet another expression of human personality. The I, through its thinking, shares the life of the world in general. In this manner, in a purely ideal way, that is, conceptually, it relates the percepts to itself and itself to percepts. In feeling, it has direct experience of a relation of the objects to itself as subject. In the will, the case is reversed. In willing, we are concerned once more with a percept, namely, that of the individual relation of ourself to what is objective. Whatever there is in willing, that is not a purely ideal factor, is just as much mere object of perception as is any object in the external world. And the summary for paragraph 5 is, there is another expression of human personality, and that is the will, which is just another object of per perception. Um, I had this in brackets, it's not really part of it, but it's just to clarify the rest of it. I wrote down, through thinking the eye relates percepts to itself, and itself to percepts via concepts. In feeling, there is a direct experience of a relation of the objects to itself as subject. In willing, we are concerned with the relation of ourself to what is objective. Um, what this paragraph is pointing out, um, he's pointing out to another factor um, that we seem to experience directly, which is that of the will. Um, feelings, he mentions here, gives us a direct experience of an object um, to ourselves as a, as a subject. Um, and thinking also, too, gives us um, a manner to connect to the world. And the other one he brings up is willing. Um, but he points out in this paragraph that willing is um, an object of observation um, just like any other object. So it's a percept like any other percept. So he's going to continue more talking about it in the next paragraph. So that's all he talks about in five. So I'm going to move on to paragraph six. Nevertheless, the naive realist believes here again that he has before him something far more real than can be attained by thinking. He sees in the will an element in which he is directly aware of an occurrence, a causation, in contrast with thinking, which only grasps the event afterwards in conceptual form. According to such a view, what the eye achieves through its will is a process which is experienced directly. The adherent of this philosophy believes that in the will he has really got hold of the machinery of the world by one corner whereas he can follow other occurrences only from the outside by means of perception. He is confident that in his will he experiences a real process quite directly. The mode of the existence in which the will appears within the self becomes for him a concrete principle of reality. His own will appears to him as a special case of the general world process. Hence the latter appears as universal will. The will becomes the principle of the universe, just as in mysticism, feeling becomes the principle of knowledge. This kind of theory is called the philosophy of will, theism. It makes something that can be experienced only individually into a constituent factor of the world. In paragraph 6, I summarized as follows. For the naive realist, he sees an element in the will that he can experience directly as the cause, in contrast with thinking, which grasps the event afterwards in conceptual form. The will becomes a principle of the universe. This theory is called the philosophy of the will. So in this paragraph, he's pointing out that for naive realists, they make um, the will their principle of reality, their um, instrument of knowledge, and that is because they can experience, like feeling, the will directly. They can see themselves as an agent of causation, so they are, through the will, you can see yourself setting things into motion, so they feel that because 
of the will this is something i can experience directly you know it must be something that i can grasp reality with and that is how they think about this because through the will they do recognize a process um that we can experience directly so there they do see that um and what else does he point out so this principle of the universe um, this theory of knowledge is called the philosophy of will um, and that is something that is only experienced individual individually and so that's what they're doing trying to formulate theories of the world and how we know based on the will which is an individual experience Another important point I wanted to bring up here as well is just um, with the will, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, it is something that we can grasp as a causation. Um, and I want to contrast to thinking what he mentions earlier in this paragraph, that thinking grabs the event afterwards. And so in time, there is a little bit of a difference in, and the will can be seen as an agent in the beginning as the causation agent. And then thinking we see in time afterwards. So after the event happens, then we get the concept. So I just wanted to point out again, just that how thinking and willing are different in time. And so that is also a factor why the philosophy of the will is seen from a naive realist perspective that that may be seen as a valid theory of knowledge because it starts things it's it's the ca it's the agent of causation and so that's also an important point for this paragraph that's all we're going to cover for this pair for this session so um, hopefully we'll finish up the rest of this chapter which is very short so that's a good thing um, if you have any questions or comments just send me a message have a good day bye